The information presented is for informational purposes only. The opinions expressed are not necessarily the opinions of any Daikin company. This information should not be confused for accounting, legal, medical, or other professional advice. Please seek advice from a qualified professional for any specific questions. Welcome to the Accelerated HVAC Success Program. My name is Ben Middleton. I'm the National Sales Training Manager for the Goodman, Amana, and Dykin Brands. Today, we're joined here with Ty McKinney, and he is the Product Manager for all of our Duckless product. Ty, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Ben. Hey, I got a question for you. How in the world did you get into this industry? I kind of happened upon it. A friend of mine happened upon it and invited me in. That's really the summary of it. <laughs> I haven't left in almost 20 years. I've been in a lot of different spots, but love it. Just absolutely gobbles you up. Well, it absolutely is a great industry to be in. And this year, we've got all kinds of exciting things happening. And the big question on every single contractor's mind is when is all of the A2L product going to hit? Yeah, that is top of mind, everyone I talk to. So when's it coming? What's coming? What's coming? You know, Daikin's been looking at this for years. Uh, 2025 is right on the horizon now, but 2021 was when Daikin first introduced an A2L product. First product in North America with an A2L in our Daikin Atmosphera. Great product. We've been selling it. When we launched that product, it launched into, I think, three or four states, just a handful of states out there that could actually allow the product to sell to it. Now there's 45 states out there that allow for an A2L product to be installed. In large part, that's due to Daikin's effort to allow and push for the regulations, the codes, the state laws that needed to be passed. We've been a big part of that push forward for helping the A2Ls to be adopted. On top of that, we launched just last week our Daikin Entra product. Again, great product for the South markets. It has uh, great capacities and everything that you would expect from a Daikin R32 product. And then this week, we're launching our Daikin Oterra product. Again, another great product. Uh, we're seeing the benefits of R32 come through in that product. We see improved efficiencies in SEER2 and HSPF2s. We see also uh, improved operating capacity on the 18 and 24K units. We see continuous operation up to 122 Fahrenheit rather than 115 wow. on the old unit. We also see almost double the cooling capacity in that 122 Fahrenheit. So a lot of improvements on those units. And then moving into the future, we have a new plant opening in Mexico. The new plant is scheduled to open in April 2024, begin production. And the first products off that line will be our multi-zone products. Those will hit the market uh, this summer. And then right after that will be our single zone Auroras. And so that just right there is just the first couple months of this year, right? Um, every couple months, we're going to be launching new products all the way through the middle of 2025. But of all of the products that people love from Daikin will continue to be produced. And more and more of those will be produced right here locally in North America. Well, that's amazing. And I'm sure that will give some benefits to the contractors just in terms of availability and yeah. in, in terms of uh, uh, also just the, the, the quality controls because we don't have to put things in shipping containers and ship them over the ocean anymore. Oh, yeah. It'll in dramatically improve what we're going to be able to bring to the market and how we come to market with those new products. So... Daikin obviously chose early on that they, they really do believe R32 is the right way to go. What product uh, benefits, besides some of the, that you already talked about, are we really seeing with the Atmosphere unit and, and seeing with some of these new products as they're coming yeah. out? Yeah, some of the biggest changes are that there aren't changes, right? Hmm. The, the biggest change that I'm seeing, right, we're using the Daikin Swing Compressor. We're using PVE oil. We're going to continue to drive inverters into all of our products for the ductless lineup. That's a huge benefit because these products aren't getting new technology per se. They're expanding on the existing technology that we already use. R32 has been used globally, as many people already know. You know 200 million units are using R32 globally. Just ridiculous numbers of things. So we're not taking some new untested and unproven technology and throwing it out there in 2025, we're adopting and integrating those existing technologies into our products moving forward. 
Some of the benefits that we're seeing into R32, though, are increased efficiencies, increased capacities on our units, increased operating ranges, things along those lines, and longer line sets uh, allowed because of R32. All of the benefits that we've anticipated coming are actually starting to show up with these new units. On top of that, we're seeing, um, because we're starting to produce here in North America, all the units coming from the Mexico factory will have built-in Wi-Fi with those units mm. so that we'll be able to integrate into the Daikin One app and all the platform that integrates with that. So from the factory now, having built-in Wi-Fi will become a standard uh, operating from that factory. Um, the other benefit that we're seeing and big change that we're seeing is all these A2Ls, we're following the same codes and the same regulations with all of those. All these units, just like this atmosphere next to us, right? We've got a half dozen A2 L products in this test lab and have for many, some of these for many years now that we've been going through. So it's not new technology per se. The A2 L, it's not a difficult uh, bridge to cross for the contractor. Similar pressures out there in the units, similar tools, as long as they're relatively, I don't know, a decade older. So check your tools. They're probably rated for A2 Ls. Make sure you understand what your tools are. If you have anything from the Reagan era, go ahead and get rid of those. Um, but anything from this decade, you're probably pretty good to go. So I, I guess kind of on the flip side of that, what uh, there's some regulations uh, going from an A1 to an A2L. And, and one of those regulations has to do with the amount of refrigerant that you have in a system. And then do I need sensors? So how does that impact yeah. ductless equipment? Yeah, that, that leak detection system, the regulation around four pounds of refrigerant required, right, is one of those things that we're looking at. But most of the mini splits that we sell, even if you extended the line sets out fully and added all the char extra charge in there for that, you're still below that four pound limit. And because of that, our mini splits will not come, the traditional high wall mini split, let me clarify mm -hmm. that, won't come from the factory with a leak detection system installed. There's no requirement for it. There's no need for it. There's no additional cost being passed on either because of that. On the flip side of that, our multi-zone systems, it depends on the application. Most multi-zone systems won't hit that four pound limit either. But if you start extending some line sets, if you put it into a really small room, because A2Ls um, accumulate at the floor level, the lower the unit is on the wall, or even if it is a floor mount unit, that changes the amount of refrigerant that's allowed to be in that space and the amount of space that it's allowed to cover. So our floor mount units, our uh, ductible units that could go into a really small space, those will come from the factory with a built-in leak detection system. So benefits across the board, um, we're evaluating how to communicate that. Our engineering manuals will have that in our... Um, product marketing uh, announcements and all of those things will have if there's leak detection systems included or what is required for per the codes that are out there because there are a lot of requirements to make sure that people stay safe. That's a huge benefit to us to make sure everybody knows and understands what those are. One of the things you and I were talking about uh, before we jumped on here was uh, you were talking about kind of the, the red marking that goes on the uh, oh, yeah. the copper uh, line sets uh, uh, from the factory. Can you tell a little bit more about that? Yeah. Just a requirement in the codes is that these units be designated as A2L. You can see on the front of this unit behind me that it says A2L, R32, right? Mm -hmm. On the side of it, it lists it as an A2L refrigerant. And then on all the refrigerant line connection points on the indoor and outdoor unit will be a little red flag, a little plastic disc on some cases that designate, hey, installer, this is an A2L system. Take your time. Make sure you're not breaking any of the codes per se. Don't dump the refrigerant, anything that you shouldn't be doing already, and connect these units appropriately. All of our units will either be um, able to connect directly or you'll be able to use your standard process for connecting units with flares. So other than the four pound requirement around the sensing, or obviously if you're in a smaller space or if you're lower on, on the ground and uh, the red markings that would be on the line sets, um, are there any major other, any other major differences between 
a, a Daikin R32 system and a, and a 410A system that contractors may be used to installing today? You know, I, I heard somebody joke, stop checking for leaks with a flame detector, <laughs> right? With a flame, <laughs> no more open flames out there. But really these, even I've seen so many videos of people flooding a room with a uh, 2 refrigerants and then trying to light it up and they couldn't get the room to light mm. up. It took a lot of effort to even get a flame to propagate in those situations. But really any situation where you have the potential for a flame, you should be more cautious. Outside of that, there's no additional requirements out there that we're pushing out there. The tools that you need, check them, make sure they're A2L certified. Outside of that, continue to do a good install. A good install makes all the difference in these equipment. It's really a differentiator for you as a contractor to go do your job and do it well, and your, con your homeowners will appreciate that. In fact, in many ways, this is going to be easier, right? Because uh, when you take a look at it with a single component refrigerant, okay. uh, now I can charge in gas or liquid phase. Uh, if we, we do have an issue uh, where we lose charge in a unit, uh, we, can, we can top units off. We don't have to necessarily uh, worry about recovering everything and then yeah. recharging from a virgin. And so there, there's some benefits uh, in going to a single component like R32. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, and so it becomes easier. And you, know, you mentioned tools a couple of different times and said, you know, chances are, and we're going to have some other tool manufacturers on in future episodes, yep. but chances are uh, if you've got tools that you've bought in the last couple of years, those tools are already going to be A2L rated and certified, and you don't have to make any major changes. But I, I think a big question a lot of people are asking, are there any other additional tools that I need to, to have with me or purchase or have uh, when it comes to doing these installations? And you really don't. That, it's just that simple. Like you said, this R32 not only is an A2L, but it's the premium end of that A2L spectrum. It really simplifies your installation and your tools. You're, you're covered. You're, you should be using all the tools that are already needed out there. So there should be no new additional tools you need to go buy. Well, Ty, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, do you have any last words that you want to share with our audience uh, in, in terms of the new Duckless product that we have coming out? Uh, you know, one thing that I did have, when did we put in our first R32 system here in North America? 2021. Okay. It's, it's been out for quite a few years. It's been widely adopted. We've sold thousands of them. It's really a great system. The Atmosphera, if you want to take a chance to become an expert before the refrigerant change is even required, start installing R32 now. Become your local expert. Become the expert so that your shop guys, your installers all have dealt with it well before you're forced to make that change. And then when you are, your homeowners will be more comfortable talking to you because you've been doing this for a while and not just, uh, you get to be my experiment right here, right? right. Uh, nobody wants to be that first case, test case. And that's why we did this back in 2021. So Ty, again, thank you so much. Yeah. For all of our guests out there, if you liked this episode and want to see more like it, please go ahead and hit that like button. Also, make sure you follow us so you can be informed of all of the upcoming episodes that we do have. Ty, thank you so much hey, for joining us. Thank you, Ben.